Hello, in this video we'll talk about a genetically encoded calcium sensor which is known as G-CAMP and we'll talk about its application in biomedical research. G-CAMP which is a genetically encoded calcium sensor was first reported in 2001 by Junishi Nakai. In this video we'll talk about what is G-CAMP, how G-CAMP works and advantage and disadvantages of using G-CAMP in neurobiology research. From 2001, the neurobiology research has really changed a lot. G-CAMP is a big discovery in neuroscience. And let me tell you why. So G-CAMP is kind of like a GFP molecule, which is attached with a calmodulin residue. And calmodulin is a protein that can bind to calcium. Also, there is a M13 peptide that is binding uh, to the G-CAMP moiety. Now, when calcium binds to these G-CAMP, then there is a conformational change. Generally, G-CAMP in calcium unbound state does not fluoresce because the chromophore moieties are protonated. Now, when calcium binds, there is a conformational change and the fluorescence is now shown. Notice the M13 helix is now in a different location. And this results in the conformational change and fluorescing of the GF, GFP molecule now. So, G-CAMP can fruitfully report the calcium fluctuations inside the neuron. And calcium fluctuations in the neuron can work like a proxy of neuronal activity. So, G-CAMP can, uh, can reproducibly report the neuronal activity. But what's the big deal about it? Because neuronal activity can be recorded using patch clamp technique and that has been reported several decades ago. So, what we have achieved so far using GCAM, what's the added advantage? And that can be understood if we try to look at the applications of GCAM. First of all, activity from several neurons can simultaneously be recorded using GCAM based approach. So, under the fluorescence microscopy, in a field of view, let's say there are 100 neurons and all of their activity can be recorded simultaneously, which was not possible using a patch clamp recording. In patch clamp recording, one neuron has to be recorded at a time. And that's the added advantage. Now, using G-CAMP and a combination of two-photon microscopy, scientists are able to record neuronal activities from behaving animals such as this particular mouse. They can really drill a hole on its skull and can record the, uh, record the activity if the mouse expresses G-CAMP in its uh, particular brain region. In this example, we can see how the mouse brain region is fluorescing over time and because they are marked by G-CAMP. Another advantage of G-CAMP is we can utilize these approach combined with two photon microscopy to image neurons which are located in a deeper location in the brain. Now using conventional patch clamp technique it might not be so easy to get access to those deeper neurons but light can access these neurons easily right. So obviously the fluorescence light that is coming from those deeper layers can be recorded using a two photon microscope. Now let's see how the data obtained from GCAMP recording can be analyzed. Generally, scientists record the delta F by F value and plot it over time. So what is delta F by F? So it is relative change of fluorescence over baseline fluorescence. So delta F is a quantity which says fluorescence at time t minus fluorescence at time 0. And baseline fluorescence is given by F0. So what is these parameters? So you can see if this is the activity profile of G-CAMP, the FT is a particular time point where we have recorded the fluorescence and F0 is basically the baseline fluorescence. Actually, after recording the fluorescence over time, scientists can get several time frames like these. So here we can see the fluorescence intensity as a function of time. So fluorescence intensities are shown in each frame which are like 2.5 milliseconds apart. And we can see at time f equal to 10, 
the fluorescence intensity reach its peak so it's kind of like a peak activity time and again it falls down to near baseline so overall we get any time point and compare it with the baseline fluorescence and thereby we generate this delta f by f curve now the biggest advantage is we can draw roi or region of interest around specific neurons from a particular live uh, imaging movie and we can calculate the fluorescence over time and that would give us an idea about how the neurons are firing over time period so you here we can see at least the, uh, the this particular um neuron which is marked by the orange traces has three peaks where the violet traces has much more peaks so these kind of informations that means spatio temporal dynamics of a neuronal activity can be captured using this approach moreover we can also get an idea about the overall circuit activity on the right hand side you can see the circuit is functioning in a synchronous manner that means all the neurons in the circuits are firing in a synchronous fashion whereas in the left side we can see the neurons in this circuit are fu functioning or firing at an asynchronous way so they are not fi firing all together these kind of informations can be obtained using gcam based approach and live imaging approach but what are the disadvantages of this kind of uh, live imaging so if we record and image the calcium activity from the same neuron one thing might be very clear that the g camp is a proxy readout for neuronal activity it does not really resolve the neuronal activity in time so much so let's say this is a fast spiking neuron and it's burst at a very fast rate and that can be seen from this image now if we record uh, in a whole cell configuration the voltage fluctuations shows there are like multiple peak of activity burst of activity but that is not nicely resolved in this calcium imaging that means temporal resolution is slightly low in case of gcam now in order to circumvent this kind of problems scientists are now improving gcam they are making gcam f which is which can possibly capture these kind of fast dynamics so there are also many different type of gcams they have also generated r camps which is in a rfp range so overall in this video we understand how gcam is a very useful tool for the neuroscientists i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe you can support my channel on patreon if you're an indian viewer you can support me via vim upi your small contribution means a lot for me my courses are present in an academy which is india's biggest learning platform you can subscribe to this uh, course by using my code ap10 and you will get a 10% discount thanks for listening